How did you describe this music? Drone. It has to be played very loud. Well, it's great to be here. I'm up at the, the top of uh, the Grai Gwen in Pontypridd to meet Gerhard Kress, who's a man of many talents. And tonight, we're actually going to go to a cinematic show which features some of Gerhard's work. Uh, I don't think all of fifty seconds of it. it <coughs> so there would be people with um, incredible con uh, contraptions. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the milder ones would be a large wooden frame um, and um, dangling from, them, from that sheets of metal and then they would be banged at uh, particular intervals. And that would be combined with various other, other bits that make some sort of noise. And uh, presumably the, um, the, the music created or the carpet of sound created would be a... Um, Either in the head of the, the, the person or the people uh, making those uh, those noises, or um, it would be partly written down in some form, but not in a in a in a, in a form recognised by a scholar, by a um, classically trained. Music. Yeah, that was that was at our church. At the church, yeah. Because uh, our our priest he had responsibility for uh, running a finishing school for um, organists. Mm -hmm. Would, would receive their training they were at the end just before um, going out into, into the world and playing so for a living and, and so apart from 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 um, from 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 doing that he also encouraged music that would have very few platforms in, in the music world so do you think that this um, this album we're listening to is perhaps in that area of experimental uh, expression but uh, um, the, the, the German experimental music scene would be very much influenced by other by, by other um, geographical areas like Poland and uh, Czechoslovakia and, and so on. So, so musicians would be coming to. I, mean, I lived in Frankfurt, so um, on a Sunday, very often I'd go to the Palmen Garden, which is the botanical garden, and there, an outdoor venue, there would be jazz um, ensembles from East Europe. East, East Europe, very often. Um, and um, they had a heavy influence on the, on music mm. in, in in Germany, and that there, there wouldn't be traditional jazz. There would be you know, rather more interesting jazz. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so so there, presumably there, there is uh, just as there is no British music, no English music, no Welsh music. So this fabulous. Um, there is no German yeah. music as such mm, because mm. Um, because the influences are being taken wherever you can find them, and they come from mm. everywhere. Mm. In, uh, in Germany and uh, my friend uh, who did his army service in Israel I went to school with um, he was going to get married but it gave me a great great opportunity to to travel around so so I partly hitched but mostly went on a bus and then finally found myself a kibbutz and had a wonderful time there picking apples but mostly having a good time oh. I wasn't there when she died. I wasn't there at the funeral. I wasn't in the country. On my travels, extended travels as it later turned out, I went and several decades on, I was still out of the country, at first in Cornwall and England and now settled in Wales. 
settled as much as an immigrant can ever be settled. Like is not is not the word I, I I'd use. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was a kid in our in our parish, um, the um, um, the, lo the local priest uh, he encouraged um, modern new new music, and very often it would be music that um, wouldn't wouldn't just wouldn't compare to uh, to to the Mozart and the Bach that we sang for concerts. I've been to her grave, I've introduced my future wife to her, well, to her headstone, to the earth, to the flowers. She knows, somehow, and it doesn't matter how she knows. Yeah, we had to dig it out recently. Ah, like oh, too quick. Oh, no. Which choir are you talking about, uh, Sally? Oh, Rossin. It's just a local ladies' choir, and they don't do serious music. <laughs> you want that to go on like record? That. They don't do serious music. You care, careful what you say Bloody now. Hell, Sally. <laughs> I might have to edit that bit. But Jocelyn, so his double bass experience. He's played in St David's Hall recently, hasn't he? That's right. Yeah. He's just playing on a normal double bass. Yeah. Do you know where we're going, Gerhard? Um, that way. To a chapter in Cardiff. Right. job to be annoying. Ignore me. <laughs> Mrs. Salvatore heard a bump. She rang the sun and together they found her on the floor. The doctor said she was dead before she hit the ground. The doctor couldn't actually know but it was good bedside manners. Even if the bedside in this case was hard lino covered floor. My grandmother's stories, not the details except for the horses and that they all eventually died mostly at dreadfully inconvenient times, leaving the family to cope with even more hardship and about the beard. Her father worked on the railways and he always wore a long black beard. Then, one morning, while walking to work as usual, he caught up with his colleagues. He tried to convince them that it was him. They nearly beat him up for the audacity. Eventually, they recognized their colleague, despite a chin, that had only 12 hours earlier seen daylight for the first time since his puberty. What type of camera have you got? It's a black one. 
<laughs> now, tell me now. Sorry, Swale. Tell me about the film that you've come here to see tonight. Oh well, number one, I'm here to see all the films. But coincidentally, uh, Gerhard had a spare ticket, mm -hmm. and he advertised it yeah. on Facebook. So I said, oh, I would be interested. And just this happened that the body, the short film I worked on, those beautiful people over here, yes. will be shown yeah. tonight. <laughs> uh, what do you do with, you, with your writing? I am in the process of trying to share it right now. Because yeah. for a long time, because I just did a master's degree, yes. so a lot of my writing skills went into academic writing, and so I, I, I was do, I was using it for papers and stuff like that. Yes. And now I really want to get published in terms of uh, you know either uh, short stories and, po and poetry. Yeah. So for you, I, I I did it for years, but never thought I'd ever you know. Take but it publishing as not as as in that that's sort of way which is fairly accessible to anybody who wants to mm. do it. But yeah. publishing as in actually finding a company which is going to yeah, that's publish well. you and distribute and, and, and so on. Yeah. Well, that's a. It's hard, but I feel with the yeah. internet, there's like as long as I'm, I'm trying to create a blog right now. Yeah. And because I feel like um, that's how you get published these days. Sally's so pointing that thing again. What should I do? I'm sure, talking about your hats. Oh, jolly good. Yeah, put it on. Yeah, look at that. That is definitely the most notable part here. And there was one. Oh, somebody I need to wait for this. Over that side. Yeah. Where they had a bar. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. still there, isn't it? I guess. Probably. They used to have a folk club there that used to meet regularly. So I can't that. I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of light filming. <laughs> so what is the event tonight? Can you tell me exactly Chapter what it is? Movie Chapter Movie Maker. Is it every year? Every month. Every month? Every Monday, yeah. Every first month Monday. So how big is your shot in there? Uh, how much are you showing? Is it short films? Short films. All yeah. short films. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh. Oh. Right. Well, I'm very honoured to be meeting Boyd Clark here this evening. And I'm very honoured to be meeting Vic Doyle. Uh, thank Facebook you, sir. Channel. Thank you, sir. I'm here with a chap called Gerard Cress, who I'll introduce you to later. Yeah. Now, we're all involved in folk music and yeah. violins and uh, cool. having a right old Irish stomp. I love folk and, music myself. Which we must... I used to do folk clubs when I first started playing. Yes. In Australia. In Australia? And in Amsterdam I did was, a couple of folk clubs. Was it a bit, was it Irish themed in Australia? Well, then it was more um, to do with sort of the American nouveau folk, um, sort of uh, Chris Christopherson, uh, John Prine and people, oh. they, were, they were the in people of the time. The real writers, yes. Americana. Yes, uh, Prine is a great song. Right? Yes, absolutely, I wish I could remember the one I'm trying to think of. But I know the one you're trying to think of, this is a hole in daddy's arm and the money goes. <laughs> I remember my grandmother's stories, stories of home. Stories of her home before she set up her own in this flat, in this foreign country, of Germany after the first big war and some years before the second world war. Stories of her dusty little ant in the severe winters, freezing hamlet. Stories of her family when she was a girl. Stories of the country she lived in until a young German soldier standing guard with his bayoneted rifle asked her to marry him and come back with him to the country of the enemy after the war. After that first big war that changed everything and set the scene for worse to come. A laughing the picture conveys independent spirit. It conveys happiness. It conveys warmth. And it says something else. Look at me. I have a life and it is similar to the life of so many other people. And we're all shaped 
by big events. Events that will roll over and squash many of us. And now, look at us again. There's something you cannot take from us. It is our humanity. I'm longing to have met my aunts. I remember the stories. I remember the warm bed and the soothing voice with a strong Polish accent.